what a day. Hey, I think there's something on the porch. All right. Did you order something from Amazon? No. Are you sure? Yep. Well, she's right. We didn't order this. Whoa! Whoa! What the? Whoa! Oh, crap! Okay, um, uh, oh, okay, found a car. Okay, Let's see. Okay, half cock, prison's open. Powder down the barrel. It takes forever. Full cock and fire. <laughs> Whew. Okay. I like that. Um, oh no. Whew. Well, that was weird. Welcome back to the channel, Den members, and happy 4th of July weekend. I mean, it's kind of the 4th of July weekend. I'm calling it the 4th of July weekend. It's weird because the 4th happens on a Tuesday this year. With Independence Day right around the corner, I thought it highly appropriate to do a showcase video on my new to me 1740s Longland Flintlock musket better known as the first model brown bess. I did an unboxing short of this a little while ago, and as I said in that short, this is kind of like a mini dream come true. Very similar to when I got my M1 Garand. Garand, Garand, Garand. We're not starting that one again. Last year. For me, flintlock muskets, and particularly the brown bess, is the quintessential symbol of American freedom. It was with the Longland Brown Bess that American colonists won their freedom from a tyrannical government and set in motion this wonderful free country we have today. No wonder King George wanted these things confiscated from the colonists. Hmm, gun confiscations. This being a reproduction, a handcrafted, American-made reproduction, it only costs about $700. If you've ever done any research on getting a hold of an authentic 18th century musket, they're very expensive. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars for a good functioning one. I was ecstatic when I found a good reproduction company for authentic hand crafted brown bess and other muskets. Before I go through the musket any further, there's a couple things I want to just call out. I am not being sponsored by anyone to do this video. I am not being paid for a positive review. I will say that this is a veteran arms brown bess. Because of YouTube guidelines regarding guns, even though this is not by the ATF standards, a firearm, I cannot put a link down in the description as to where you can buy one of these. I can say that if you were to go to your search engine of choice and type in veteran and musket and reproduction, I guarantee you will find the website where you can buy these. I purchased this musket with my own hard-earned money. It was kind of a gift to myself for hitting the 1,000 subscriber mark. And this is as good a time as any. I want to thank everyone once again for subscribing to the channel, for supporting the Phantom Llamas Den. We could not be where we are now without you. Again, thank you for all the support, and I can't wait to share with you all of the content we have coming in the months ahead. I usually do a safety check for our safety Karens out there. I, I, I can't show you this gun is clear. Um, you're gonna have to take my word for it. So let's get right into this beauty and go over what makes it tick. Or I guess go flash and then bang. Overall, the Brown Bess is 
like I said, a flintlock musket. It weighs just about 10 pounds and it is making me strain here because of how hefty it is. And it is a whopping 62 inches long. This is literally taller than my wife. There are three key parts to the brown bess and to all flintlock muskets. Those parts being lock, stock, and barrel. Does that sound familiar? To start the rundown, we're actually gonna go in reverse order. So we'll talk about the barrel, then we'll talk about the stock, and then we'll talk about the lock. The Brown Best has a 75 caliber, 46 inch barrel. For size comparison, here is the Brown Best. Here is the M1 Grand. The barrel length of the Brown Best is almost literally twice in length as the M1 Garand. This is not a short barrel. <laughs> Moving on, you'll notice that there are no sights on the Brown Bess barrel. Now you may think that this is a front sight post and it certainly can be used as that. This is actually the bayonet lug. I haven't gotten a bayonet yet, I'm working on one. Now, as I said, this is a 75 caliber barrel. You load it with one of these. This is a 69 caliber lead musket ball. Moving on to the stock. Traditionally, the Brown Bess was constructed with a walnut stock. Because this is a reproduction, it is actually made with very nicely refined and stained teak wood. It is just as hard, if not harder than walnut, and it does keep very well, although there is a little more maintenance required for teak wood versus walnut. On the underside of the stock, you'll see a placeholder for the ramrod. Mine is just a simple ramrod. I'll probably upgrade this to a metal one down the road just because of durability. As I was packing the powder, it was just peeling off bits of the wood. It is a softer wood. You'll notice pinholes along the stock here. These pinholes contain slightly bowed pins that hold the barrel in place all along the fore end of the stock. And you'll see that there are beautiful handcrafted brass inlays along the stock. Overall, this stock is gorgeous. Again, this is handcrafted hand built. This was not built by a machine. This was crafted to spec from the plans that the British used to make their muskets. Last but certainly not least is what is called the lock. What in modern firearms I would say is what we call the action. The lock contains the hammer, the frizzen, the pan, the port, and the trigger. Being a flintlock gun, when you squeeze the trigger, the hammer, which contains a piece of flint, would strike against the closed frizzen, creating a spark. The spark would then ignite the powder that you had poured into the pan here. That creates the flash. The spark and the flash in the pan would then ignite the remaining powder, the powder that's in the barrel, which would then propel the musket ball out the end of the barrel. That brings us to the trigger. I'm not gonna dry fire this. This is not really a gun that I am comfortable dry firing too often. The trigger works. If you're expecting something like an AR-15 trigger or an AK trigger or a Glock trigger, it's not. It is a very, very deliberate trigger pull. I don't know if you could accidentally pull the trigger on a musket. It takes a considerable amount of strength. But that's about it for a rundown. So how does it shoot? You know, there's a lot of people out there that would say never meet your heroes because you'll just come away disappointed. If you don't have any experience with black powder, if you don't have any experience with muzzle loaders, let alone a flintlock gun, you're gonna have some frustrations with this. I had quite a few issues with only getting a flash in the pan when I took this out for the first time. There's another idiom for you. Sound familiar? Flash in the pan. 
there are plenty of things that can go wrong when you shoot a musket. If you don't have the pan primed with enough powder, you're not gonna get enough of a flash to ignite the powder in the barrel. If you put too much of the powder into the pan, therefore not having enough to go down the barrel, you're not gonna have enough power to evacuate the ball from the musket's barrel, and then you're gonna have a whole set of other issues. Because one of the key components of a flintlock musket is the piece of flint in the hammer, you have to make sure that the flint is properly seated and properly napped and is aligned properly. If it isn't aligned flat with the frizzen, it's not gonna get a good enough spark. Therefore, it's not gonna ignite the powder in the pan. If it's too dull, same effect. If it's not seated properly, if it's seated too far forward or too far back, or if it's just gotten too short, you're gonna, again, have a lack of spark. In all, learning to shoot a musket can be frustrating if you don't know what you're doing, or even if you do know what you're doing, but there's still some things that you aren't quite getting exactly right, you're gonna have issues. All that said, I love this musket. On the 50, I like that pretty flash that you just made, that was cute. <laughs> there's a reason people love muskets. <laughs> Will I be taking this out to the range very often to shoot? Probably not. However, I would love to get to the point where I could get three shots off inside a minute. Drop a comment down below if you'd like to see that at a future date on the channel, me doing a three shot in one minute challenge. And I guess that brings me to the final point. Should you get one of these? If you love the American Revolution, if you are a Revolutionary War history buff and a firearm gun person, absolutely. If you've wanted one of these, absolutely get one. They aren't that expensive if you find the right manufacturer, if you find a good dealer on reproductions. One thing that I will say to look out for is Musket balls are kind of difficult to get a hold of. There are a few companies out there that make pre-made cartridges. You just have to add the powder. Uh, they also have the make it yourself kits for the paper cartridges. The thing that you're going to have the most difficulty getting a hold of, in my opinion, are the pieces of flint. It's difficult to get here in the US because there's only a couple flint mines that are actually in the United States. All the rest are overseas and, you know, importing flint isn't exactly something that is prioritized. Even if you don't intend to shoot this, it makes a beautiful piece. Whether you're going to hang it on the wall or have it sit in a corner, I'm still trying to figure out a place that is wife approved in our house. I am very much in love with this gun. I couldn't be happier that I own this. And even though it's a reproduction, it does feel like I own a piece of history. And as I said, despite this being a reproduction and despite it being a reproduction of a gun that was designed and built by the British, because it was used by the American colonists to win their freedom from Britain. I cannot think of very many other items that so accurately and succinctly symbolize American freedom than a brown bess musket. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. Get out there and celebrate our freedom. Let freedom ring. As always, don't take life too seriously and make it a great day.